Going to have a little bit of fun on today's episode of Locked On Blue Jays. We got a ton of responses to the last video and the last couple posts throughout this week. We're going to respond to a couple comments because there were some very interesting takes on Ross Atkins. You are Locked On Blue Jays, your daily Toronto Blue Jays podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to Locked On Blue Jays. Thank you for making Locked On Blue Jays your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You can start the season off with a big return on FanDuel. New customers can place a $5 bet and you'll get started with $150 in bonus bets. If you win your first $5 bet, visit FanDuel.com to get started. As always, I'm Braden Iwasco. He's Carter First. You can find us on Twitter, Braden 5 Iwasco, Carter First 2 as well on Instagram and TikTok at Locked On Blue Jays as well. If you're new here on YouTube or you're listening anywhere else, go make sure you hit that subscribe button on the YouTube page. It really does help us out. Uh, keeps us at the top of your page. Keeps you guys notified if uh, there's any live streams, any shorts, any videos, any podcasts, anything. Uh, it's all there as well. Uh, we have the Discord link down below. We will be kicking off uh, our Locked On Blue Jays Movember page, so we will have that linked as well. Make sure you guys go if you if you are able, go donate. It's for a great cause, um, and we're, we'll sort of get that cooking. The boys will uh, shave the beards off uh, later today, so and uh, we'll get cooking because t- t- technically we're recording this Thursday night, so you know we want to make sure we're good and clean shave for uh, the, the Monday episode. Um, and uh, we'll we'll take that on. It's going to be a ton of fun, and uh, it's always for a good cause. So can't really uh, can't really say anything else. Carter, my man, a lot of uh, texts and comments and responses from the listeners uh, from you know the show yesterday, the show the day before, and sort of throughout this whole week, and and I guess the end of last week as well. Uh, and I I think there's one that we wanted to get started on, and we love when you guys leave us some comments and stuff like that. It gives us talking points and f- keeps us in tune to what you guys are interested in and want to hear about if. Yeah, there are specific takes that you may want to hear. Carter, let's get it uh, kicked off. Yeah, uh, just wanted to start out. I'm still riding the high from yesterday. I'm still riding the high off the Yankees' demise. I absolutely love to see it. I'm not sure if uh, you're feeling the same way, Braden, but uh, I was just waking up just in a good mood. I used to absolutely love to see that, and uh, obviously not from the Toronto Blue Jays. But uh, most of the comments, it was from uh, a lot of them were from the Anthony Santander video when we were talking about Ross Atkins and uh, the power back quote. And uh, there was a lot of good points in uh, the comments. We always like getting these debates, things like that. Braden was answering a lot of the questions. I didn't, uh, he beat me to the punch, so I didn't get to uh, talk about a lot of them. So we figured we'd talk a little bit on this podcast. So uh, a lot of you guys make good points where he said, uh, Ross Atkins said he doesn't want the power bat, but not specifically that. He wants guys to hit sink and slide, wants more so all around hitters, and just wants guys to uh, get, not necessarily just sell out for the power. They want him to be able to do multiple different things at the plate. My thing with this is that when you look at free agency right now and you look at all the guys like minus your Juan Soto's, minus your Alex Bregman's, you're going to have free agency and you want a guy that's really good in all attributes at the plate, they're probably not hitting free agency. They're probably getting re-signed to a baseball team because they are very good at doing all these different attributes. And when you look at down the list, you can go for some of these other free agents that, again, they're not necessarily power bats, but they're not necessarily contact hitters. They can do things, everything like decently. They're not necessarily like exceptional or anything, but they're not bad at anything. But are these guys going to be the guys that are going to elevate your team? If you get another guy that's going to hit 12 home runs, hit 260, 265, drive in 45 runs, like have 45 RBIs. Is that necessarily a guy that's going to elevate this offense? For me, it's not necessarily that whatsoever. Cause we look at these home runs. If you look at Vladimir Guerrero Jr. At 30, again, down years, you can't really account for that. Like this bad of years, that this down of years, the next home run hitter on the Toronto Blue Jays was not 19. You need a power bat. You look, again, I went over the first two games of the World Series. The majority of those runs, I think it was 11 of 15 runs, were scored off the home run ball. Especially when you get to these pitchers that are very good, it's tough to get these innings where you get a bunch of runners on base, where you get a hit after a hit or a walk and a hit. It's a lot easier to get one swing of a bat, hit a home run, than it is to get these big rallies going. There was a lot of good points in his comment section, but for me, I think, Again, he didn't completely dismiss getting a power bat, but that's not his first option. And when you look at the market, you look at some of these guys, especially before a guy like Anthony Santander, that's what this guy's offering. His main attribute is the power bat. And I don't really see that as a fit for Ross Atkins and what he wants. But with that, Anthony Santander, there is, again, there's obviously some negatives with the majority of these free agents. Even Juan Soto, you look at the defense, it's not a very good defender. So if you really want to nitpick, you can nitpick a lot of these free agents. 
both Ross Atkins, we just need offense, whether that comes from doubles, whether that comes from triples. Singles isn't going to get it done on this Toronto Blue Jays team, especially when you look at the lineup that we do have right now. Yeah, Carter, and this goes back to what we talked about in the video. Yes, he might have not specifically only said, oh, I, we're only looking, we're all, you know, we're not specifically looking for a power bat. That's true, but like Carter, you said, some of these guys, that is their main attribute. And what I took away from that is that's not what they're looking for, it is that main attribute is power. But in a guy like Anthony Santander that can drive in runs, that would be a perfect uh, to slot in at the four hole on this baseball team. I don't know what else you would be looking for, especially for a guy in his price range with the amount of home runs that he hit. This would be a guy that most likely would be a fantastic fit for this baseball team. You're not going to get a Vladimir Guerrero Jr. You're not going to get a Bo Bichette in most years. You're uh, in free agency. That's not what's going to happen. Guys like Bobby Witt Jr. are not going to hit the free agent market. And if they do, they're going to be making too much to the, for the Blue Jays to buy anyway. So would you rather have a guy that gets on base, yeah, more often? Or would you rather get a guy, or maybe a tad bit more, that might hit 35 home runs, 30 home runs. That's what the Blue Jays need right now. And I don't think it's a question. I, I don't think if you can look at this free agent class, I don't think you can, there's certain guys you can pick out and absolutely say this, they would be a fantastic fit. And I think that's a little bit different from this year's class to last year's class. Is that there are multiple good fits. We've just talked about Anthony Santander so far, and we've got a lot more guys to discuss sort of over this off season. But, we have to be looking at those guys that can't drive in runs. That's how you win baseball games at the end of the day. I don't care. I don't want you to hit. And whatever Ross Atkins says, uh, you know, I, I don't necessarily fully believe him right now. I, I don't believe in what he has to say. I don't believe what he's preaching because we've, we haven't seen it work. And uh, another comment addressed kind of uh, the Ross Atkins not being very good with the media and uh, not being a very good speaker. As a GM of a franchise, unfortunately, you're going to have to address the media. You're going to have to talk. That's something that you're going to have to work on with Ross Atkins. And that's all we really get is what Ross Atkins tells us in the media. Other than that, we're just speculating what this guy's thinking. We don't know what's going inside his head other than what he is telling us. So for me, it's from what he has said. Again, that's the only sample size that we do have. And a lot of things he said does not make me very optimistic for the future. And uh, another point that somebody brought up in the comments is that uh, you've got to hope that Vladdy can obviously produce more home runs but they also said that George Springer is a 25 home run hitter typically and Bo a 25 home run hitter typically Bo Bichette I'll, I'll give you more so that one in the last three seasons 20 he had 29 in 2021 24 in 2022 and 20 in 2023 George Springer being a 2020 or a 25 home run hitter is a thing of the past I do not see this guy bouncing back this next season and hitting even 20 home runs I would be surprised if this guy hits 15 home runs this is just another reason why they need to adjust free agency. They need to get a power bat. They need to get somebody to drive in runs. Again, the home run ball is awesome. That's exactly what you want. But you want the power. You want people to hit the ball hard and drive the ball into the gap. You'll take doubles. You'll take triples. It's, at this point, if you're going to get a guy that's hitting singles, you might as well just get a guy that walks all the time. Because if you hit a single, you walk. It's, it's similar. Again, if there's runners on base, obviously you prefer the single. But power is such a, a such a desperate need for this team. They were, what, 28th in the league in home runs out of 30 teams? That's not going to play. You need you don't have to be first in the league. Again, I'd love for the Blue Jays to be first in the league for home runs, but you've got to be at least in the middle of the pack, between 10 and 20, ideally, obviously, above 15, the league average. Uh, it, it's just crazy to me that uh, Ross Atkins still just uh, has not shown that he wants to address a power bat situation in the last couple of seasons. But uh, going continuing on that, this guy makes another good point. It says, uh, you look at Jorge Solera, you look at a guy like, J.D. Martinez, for example, Jorge Soler is the guy that's like, it's power or bust. And I can agree for that. That's not really a guy that the Toronto Blue Jays should want because if Jorge Soler is not hitting home run, he's going to strike out. You want a guy with, for example, Anthony Santander. He's not a guy that's necessarily going to get on base all the time, but he's a guy that is going to walk. He's going to hit doubles. He's going to hit home runs. And that's what you want. There is a little bit of an in-between for Santander. It's not just either strike out or a home run he does provide other assets at the penalty as well yeah carter and we're getting to this point with the toronto blue jays that they need to make a move now otherwise there's not going to be enough quality pieces left um going into you know later on into the free agency and guys get scooped up early and will make decisions early so the blue jays have to be on top of what their needs are and address that very quickly because yeah it, it, these guys get passed over quick and then it turns out 
maybe you're late to the bit and you can't be late to the bit on some of these guys. If you can get Anthony Santander, like for the, some of the prices that we talked about in that episode. And if you haven't watched that episode, make sure you go back. Cause a lot of this is from that episode and sort of the, the culmination of everything. Um, yeah, it, it, that has to be a move that has to be made. It, it just is. This team needs batting. And as much as we want to say, you know, the bullpen and the pitching matters, it does. But at the end of the day, you see like the Dodgers in the World Series or even the Yankees making the World Series with a very underwhelming bullpen. But they had the the offense to Top do three. that. And so it's which way do you want to go? And to me, we've seen that this team lacks power. And, and we've seen that this bullpen was good two years ago, wasn't good this year, a little bit all over the map. I think it has the pieces when Jordan Romano's back and Eric Swanson is at his, his peak and hopefully he gets back to there. Um, I think you have to sell out for the bats this year. And as much as, yeah, you can make a couple additions to the bullpen, but I think this has to be an off season to find some good bats to surround Vlad and Bo with because George Springer, as you said, is not cover. He is not doing it. He's not going to hit 20 and maybe he hits 20. Maybe he does, but it's not consistent enough. And, and I think a move has to be made so that Springer isn't the leadoff man anymore. It's, it's getting to the point where he's just not getting on base enough to, then provide guys on base for Vladimir Guerrero Jr. and hopefully Bo Bichette this year. And I think you could have a really good top five, six guys if you play your offseason correctly. Again, we'll have to sort of wait and see. Well, and it's it's just beginning because obviously trades have gone have already happened. It's the first day of uh, free or not free agency. The first day of the offseason free agency starts on November 5th. So it's getting close. We're getting right there. And Ross Atkins is going to have to make moves. He's going to have to get in the market quickly. So we're kind of going to go over some of Ross Atkins' previous moves, some of the moves that have been made, what Ross Atkins should do, when she should make these moves, who he should contact, things like that. And just our faith in Ross Atkins, because again, there was a couple comments that well, we do want to talk about on this podcast. We're going to take a short break and come at you guys with that right after this. Get ready to tackle NFL action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers can bet $5, get $150 in bonus bets if you win. The FanDuel Sportsbook app gives you everything you need to place live bets on NFL all in one place. I'm telling you guys, the live bets are the way to go. You can see the trends, you can see what guys are doing, you can see who's producing, and you can bet it right there in the game as it's going on. That's how I've been winning some money lately. So um, from a guy who doesn't win a ton, Take advantage of these live game bets. It really does help. So when you get on to the middle of a game, you can check out the latest stats. You left play-by-play and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. Just visit FanDuel.com to join today. You'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Never waste a hunch and make every moment more with FanDuel. America's number one sportsbook and official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Yeah, I, I'm going to start this one off. Uh, I just want to start this off by saying uh, we're addressing these comments. This isn't in like a hating way whatsoever. We love that we're getting these comments. We love the different opinions. And that's the thing. We we went over uh, for, and we're going to go over some of our takes from 2023. And uh, for the 2024 season, we're not right about everything. Ross Atkins might prove us wrong. We want Ross Atkins to prove us wrong. We want the Toronto Blue Jays to be the best team in all of baseball. We want everything to go perfectly for the Toronto Blue Jays. We're just kind of... Uh, we're viewing it as we see it. We're giving our perspectives, kind of what the Ross Atkins experiences has been through our eyes. And that's exactly what you guys are doing in the comment section as well. And that's our favorite part about this, just getting different perspectives, different takes on what the Blue Jays should do. Because obviously Ross Atkins has done some good things. He's done some bad things. We've had some good takes. We've got some bad takes. And I'm sure you guys have had some good takes and some bad takes as well. But uh, one more comment we wanted to get into was about the, the Ross Atkins and just kind of the people's perspective on Ross Atkins. Uh, they kind of go in to say that uh, Ross Atkins is – one of those guys that uh, is just easily disliked and people just are almost preying on this guy's downfall. They, uh, it doesn't matter if this guy does anything good. Like for example, the trade deadline, he has a good trade deadline and they say, Oh, it's about time. Or finally this guy does something good where I'm at with this rock ask, ask, ask Atkins, Jesus Ross Atkins. I actually know that what this guy's name is, believe it or not. But where I'm at with this is you look at 2023, you look at the off season, you look at the glaring needs, doesn't address them. You look at the success from the Ross Atkins era. You go to 2016, they'll get playoff wins there. That's not Ross Atkins' team. That's Alex Anthopoulos' team. Ross Atkins didn't really have to do anything. He kind of just gifted an inheritance in a sense. You look at the Ross Atkins experience. He hasn't, like, he has nothing to show for it. We don't have a playoff win. And we've had some crazy losses in between there as well. Obviously, going back to the Mariners uh, series as well. Somebody had to comment that. I, I 
had to bring that up in you. That one still hurts me, obviously. But uh, just a part of the experience. It's one of those things. It's like you do something wrong so many times. At what point are we just going to realize that Ross Atkins may not be a part, the man for the job? And it's at the point as well, you don't have any success as a part of the roster. How long are you going to keep that roster together with no success whatsoever and just expect something to change? Carter, we know living in Canada that these markets are very volatile. And, and the fan bases love to explode, right? They're either super happy and they're all for you, guns blazing. They would fight wars for you. Or they or they can't stand what's going on. And, and the mood changes game to game almost. And we know that. We see that, right? In every, it doesn't matter if it's hockey, the CFL, uh, baseball, basketball, it doesn't matter. It, these, This is just a Canadian market. And that's what happens. And I think all of the Blue Jays fans are starting to realize, oh my goodness, he's been here for nine years and the Blue Jays haven't won a playoff game. This is not where everybody expected this team would be when they drafted Vladimir Guerrero Jr. and Bo Bichette. They expected this team to be contending for World Series right now. So obviously, Ross Atkins hasn't done something right. And yes, maybe the players haven't played to their best of their abilities or at this, or together enough to be at their best together and that's a part of it but at the same time like carter you brought up you saw the needs of this baseball team and they you they did not get addressed at what point do we have to say okay enough's enough maybe somebody else can come in here and run the ship better well and, i don't know man it's it's it blows my mind that that people are still and you can have your take. I totally get it. If, if you are a Ross Atkins fan, and, and we can look back at some of the moves he's made, and you can look at it through a good lens. There has been good moves made. But at the end of the day, if you are not winning and you are not making it winning a playoff game, obviously it wasn't good enough. And that's I, I, that's sort of where I'm at. I don't. I, I think some of the moves, like when he makes moves, sometimes I think it's, oh, this is not bad. This is pretty good but it's not helping this team move forward. And at the end of the day, that's what has to be happening. Well, when we go back to this trade deadline discussion, I think we can all be in agreement that the trade deadline, what Ross Atkins did there, he did a good job. He got very yeah. good assets, but he's one of the biggest reasons that we were at that trade deadline. And we were selling at that trade deadline. Again, you can't account for the Bo Bichette falling off a cliff. It's tough to account for George Springer falling off that desperately. I expected the George Springer fall off a little bit, but not, you know, being one of the worst hitters of all time on the Toronto Blue Jays. And we kind of have this thing where you go back to 2021, where it's all offense. You had the best offense ever. You didn't really have pitching. The defense wasn't that good. Ross Atkins decides to go all in on the defensive side. And now we're in this scenario where we don't have any offense. And now what I'm trying to think is, is Rock at, ask, Rock, I can't even say this guy's name anymore. Ross Atkins, does this guy have a happy medium? It seems like he's either all in on one thing, all in on the pitching side, all in on defense, or he's all in on the offensive side. You need, obviously, you need good defense. We've seen that in the World Series. You can't have a Yankees blunder like you did in the fifth inning. Defense does matter, but you're right. The Yankees, their bullpen, not very good. Does it matter against the Dodgers? Yes, because they have a very good offense. Pitching does matter, but your offense can carry you. You look at the Texas Rangers winning the World Series last season. They didn't have a very good bullpen either. Their offense completely carried them through the entire playoffs, and it keeps you in baseball games, as we saw as uh, this season. The Jays were down 3-1. The game was over. You're like, there's yeah. no way this offense is coming back. Maybe in the half, second half of the year when you get your prospects, things like that. But the first half of the year, 3-1, that's it. And when we look at 2021, we could have been up 8-1. And we're like, okay, this game isn't over because our bullpen sucks. And especially from a fan point of view, i much rather have 2021 because the games are way more entertaining when there's more runs compared to a three-run baseball game. And yeah, don't get me wrong. It's frustrating when your bullpen blows the game. But it also feels a lot better when your team puts up 10 runs or eight runs, right? It's, it's, it's a completely different feeling. And, and you're right. It's, it's, there's no happy medium with Ross Atkins. And that's a big problem. If you got to understand, I'm okay with if in free agency, if you want to go all in and grab as many bats as possible, good quality bats, and then you maybe want to make a trade at the deadline to get a, uh, an extra lever because an offense should be able to carry you to the playoffs. They might not be able to win you the playoffs, but they should be able to get you to the dance. And then it's the moves that are that could be and should be made at the deadline that puts you over the top. That's where you bolster the bullpen heavily, maybe, is in that um, at the deadline. And, and if that happens, I think that in my head, if we're looking at this as a blueprint for the free agency, what to do this season, 
And again, armchair manager, I get it. But you load up on your bats. You get quality bats to surround Bo and Vlad. You make sure that offense is going to take advantage of what of the two guys that are in their lineup right now. And then at the deadline or throughout the season, you start making moves to bolster that bullpen when need be. You see what you got in the first little bit, and then you start making moves. You start throwing moves out there to acquire different guys from teams that maybe aren't you know that aren't going to be competing. And that's how you should play this season. And I and I'll leave it there. That's enough of a rant for me. But in my head, if we're talking about what a blueprint for this free agency looks like, that's it for me, Carter. Well, when we look at Ross Atkins and we'll look at the roster that he constructed, we'll talk about the defense. Alejandro Kirk plays good defense, not completely sold in the Vladdy defense, just going through it. Whoever you have at second base, it's going to be good enough. Second base is one of those positions you can kind of get away with not being the best defender. So you have, don't have a good arm. You're not throwing the ball out for anyway. Bo a little bit of a question mark, but Ernie Clement playing in the infield, definitely fine with that. Dalton Varsho, obviously don't have to complain about his defense whatsoever. The only thing with Dalton Varsho is that the injury at the end of the season, we're going to have to talk about, obviously, as we get closer to the season, see if that might keep him up for some time. George Springer still playing good defense. So you do have the ability to probably get one guy that's not necessarily the best defender of all time. You can kind of hide that guy in the outfield. Again, as long as they're making the easy plays for me, I don't need someone going out there making diving catches. Do you have Dalton Varsho to kind of do that for you? kind of take over a little bit with uh, that side of the ball. But uh, with the rest of this team, with uh, with Ross Atkins, and you look at the defense you have, you have other replacements as well. Leo Jimenez plays pretty good defense, things like that. What we I want Ross Atkins to do this offseason is maybe take it a different way. You look at free agency, maybe you don't like some of the bats there. We talked about trades. There is some prospects, there is some players, and if you want to move on from some different players inside the system as well, maybe you move on from, from some MLB talent. Shake some things up. This is your last year anyway. If You might as well go balls to the wall. You might as well throw it all in. Maybe make a blockbuster move. Maybe completely change face in the Toronto Blue Jays organization. You have some pitchers that you could move. Again, bullpen, you need, it needs to be addressed, things like that. I'm looking for Ross Atkins to get creative this offseason. Go away from what he's done previously. Go all out. Do something different. Don't go with the uh, conservative approach. you got to go all in this season. Throw the money at Juan Soto. Throw the money at Alex Bregman, whoever it is. You got to make a big move this offseason. Jays fans are wanting it. The media is wanting it. Everyone surrounding Toronto Blue Jays is wanting it. We need a change. The Blue Jays need something to inject fire into their system, into their lineup, into their organization. And it all starts with Ross Atkins, what he does this offseason. It really does. It really does. It's going to be a, a, a massive time. We've already talked about it, that this is probably one of the most important free agencies, offseasons in Blue Jays history. Just where everything's at, the fans, the media, the team keeping the guys together, your core together. This is very important to, and to see what's going to come out of this. So again, we've talked about this to death, Carter, and, and we will continue probably in this off season talking about the free agency, who's available, who's not. Uh, but of course we always want to have some fun on some Friday episodes. So we're going to get into the blue, J the locked on blue Jays question of the day in the next segment. Just hold on one quick second. We'll be right back right after this short break. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. I always talk about it. Game Time is one of my favorite apps because it makes it so easy to buy tickets. You can use their new uh, feature called Game Time Picks. It makes it even more. It makes it even easier to save more on sports, concerts, comedy, and theaters. I always talk about the different deals they have available. They have their flash deals. Save even more on exclusive in-app deals on select seats ahead of the game or event. They have their zone deals. So in a zone deal, you can save even more when you choose a section and like Game Time choose the seats. So you just say, I just want to sit in section 114. And then game time, be like, all right, you're 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 in section 114 and you get these seats. So you don't get to specifically pick which ones, but you get to at least pick the section. So you can get a good deal there. You can also, uh, you can toggle all in pricing. This feature shows you the total up front with no surprise fees. That one's huge for me. I always want to know how much I'm going to pay. I don't want to have to be guessing at the checkout if it's if I'm going to get a an extra $20 put on top of there for some reason. Uh, take the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets and more with Game Time Picks. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use code Locked On MLB for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code L O C K E D M L B for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. So, Carter, Locked On Blue Jays question of the day: What do you got for us on this Friday episode? I'm coming at you guys with another Locked On Blue Jays question of the day. Just another reason for you guys to leave comments, leave questions, leave your opinions, things like that. Well, there's a good chance, especially with the offseason. Now, obviously, free agency, things like that. We have a little bit more to talk about, hopefully, and hopefully pretty soon. But for right now, we, uh, we're enjoying your guys' questions, looking at what you guys want the Toronto Blue Jays to do this offseason. 
what you guys are seeing from this team and just uh, the different perspectives that we're getting. So this question is, uh, if the Blue Jays could, could get one player, obviously hypothetical, uh, from any team that's not named Ho- Shohei Otani, I think Shohei Otani is, for me, us at least, the best player in baseball. Toronto Blue Jays get one player from any team in the league. Who are you going with? It's a tough one. I, I sort of threw out a few names in my head here. Again, a guy like Bobby Witt Jr. would be perfect. I mean, again, yes, he would, you know, you'd have to figure out who's going to play shortstop with him and Bo. But to have both Bo and Bobby Witt and Vlad in a lineup, it would be so key. I think one of them could go over to second. One of them could slot in at third. They would be able to figure it out. Another guy would be Francisco Lindor. Uh, But for me, Carter, I think where they could take the most advantage and what a huge spot it would be in with sort of the uncertainty around Alejandro Kirk and what he his bat brings. We know what kind of defense he brings. Um, But Adley Rutschman, I, I think I think he is just a great fit. I think. You need a guy that's young uh, uh, and, and just a stud behind the dish and can hit. And Adley Rutschman is definitely a guy that can bring that for this team. Uh, I, I was sort of throwing it around like, okay, what what's going to work? And I, and I could get a guy like, uh, you know, Aaron Judge, who's 30. He's probably going to have a bunch more years left. But a, a young guy that you can, you know, sort of Vlad and Bo can put their, uh, their, their work into as well and help them become better. Uh, I think Adley's a perfect one there. Um, they would just all complement each other very well. And to Alejandro Kirk is a little bit of an iffy one with his bat sometimes, the hot and cold and the, and the, un, you know, the uncertainty around him. Um, I, I don't think it's a need, but I think that I would love Adley behind the dish. I did not expect you to go there with that one. Uh, this is just a question. It's kind of like, do you want, do you think the Toronto Blue Jays are going to be competitive within the next five years? Do you want to get a younger guy to build around this team? Because Aaron Judge, uh, 32, uh, again, one of the best players in all of baseball, but he's 32 years old. At some point, does that cap? Uh, you Again, if you don't expect the Toronto Blue Jays to win in the next three, four years, then you're probably going younger. The rest of the one, uh, yeah, I don't mind that. Uh, 26 years old, obviously. Uh, Alejandro Kirk trade bait, you get that as well. For me, uh, Ronald Acuna was one that stuck out for me. The only reason I'm not going to say him is just the injury concerns. 26 years old, but you have seen what Ronald Acuna does when he's healthy, what he can do in a full season. For me, again, you, you brought this. The first guy you actually talked about is the guy I'm going to go with, and it's Bobby Witt because this guy is just one of the best players in all baseball. Again, you have the Bo Bichette problem. At this point, you're probably just you're either moving on from Bo Bichette, you're, you're probably not moving him to two because he does not want to go to two big. He'd go to two for this year and then probably leave, I would assume, because he wants to play shortstop. He's been fairly open about that. At this point, what I would do is, I, yeah, you get Bobby Witt and you trade Bo Bichette. You figure out, you try to build for the future. Bobby Witt's 24 years old. You still sign Vladdy. You still have some options there. Uh, based on unless we have the best free agency of all time, maybe Ross Atkins makes a trade. Something's got to happen for me to get a little more excited like, for the Toronto Blue Jays to be a World Series contender. Obviously, you have last season. It's tough to miss the playoffs and be a million games under 500 and then go right back in the next season and be a World Series contender. But we did see the New York Mets do that. And if we did get Bobby Witt, I think it'd be way easier to do that, obviously, because you'd have either your one or two hitter. He's going to steal a ton of bases, play very good defense, and – he hasn't even necessarily played the base baseball of his career yet. So I think uh, the world is Bobby Witt's oyster, and he is going to be one of the best baseball players in the league for a very long time. And I like that pick, too. I, I said it. I, I love Bobby Witt, and I love what he does. For me, I went a different direction so that we could have three solid hitters in this lineup. And to keep Bo Bichette and Vlad and then also add another piece in, I had to find a situation where that would fit. And to me, it would be the catcher position. That gives you three very good bats from a position that Alejandro Kirk has been if very, very iffy at. So I, I think both of them are very acceptable answers. Um, let us know what you guys think down in the comments below. Who would be your pick? Who who would you go with out of our two? Uh, whatever you want to do, let us know what you guys think as well. There's uh, uh, another guy also that I almost threw into this and I didn't actually do it, but this is a guy that, uh, you know, he's on the market. It's real. It's semi-realistic. It is an option for the Toronto Blue Jays and that's Juan Soto. He's right there in front of your face. He's a very good hitter. Obviously you see what he can do in the playoffs, what he did with the Braves, what he did with the, the Yankees this season, obviously didn't uh, matter in the playoffs. He said that he's open to going to all 30 teams in the MLB. Maybe that's just a leverage ship because he wants to get the bag. I'm not sure what it is, but I don't care. As long as you say you're not going right back to the Yankees, that gives us a chance. So Juan Soto would be another fair option. I believe he's either 25 or 26 years old. The young guy same, around the same age as Vladimir Bo fits that outfield position. If you want three good hitters and you yeah. want a more realistic scenario, it's right in front of our faces. 
Yeah, no, that's totally fair. I think there's a lot of acceptable answers here. I don't think this Absolutely. is a, yeah. a one answer fits all. But uh, as always, we appreciate you guys watching, making us your first listen every day. If you want to find a second listen, go check out Locked on MLB with host Paul Sullivan. Sully, great show over there. He's going to sort of be breaking down the MLB as a whole when big moves be made. We will do that for us as well. And probably if there's other huge moves, we'll cover it too. Uh, but make sure you check that channel out. Go make it your second and uh, as always, have a great weekend. We got some yeah. fun stuff planned this weekend. One well. more thing yeah, for okay. the people. Cool. Play the Cam Newton clip. I'm back. The shorts are back. I'm going to be uh, coming out with them again. I made a Yankee short. We're going to be doing the player reviews again. Uh, different things. Uh, if any free agency signing comes out, 100% there's going to be a short. I'm not going to commit to every single day because it's the off season. A lot of things, you know. So there's going to be days that literally nothing happens. But be, be watching the shorts. Be ready for it on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube shorts. They're going to be coming out, flying at you guys, as Braden said. Support and everything is always appreciated. And we hope you guys have a good weekend. Yeah, one more thing, I guess. Sorry. Uh, and, and also, if there's any huge signing from the Toronto Blue Jays, we will go live. We'll be live. If, depending where it happens, we'll try to go live. If it's very late in the night for some reason, maybe we'll just throw out the pod and that'll be on the pod. But if anything happens during the day, we will go live. So make sure you guys check that out as well. Uh, that'll be on the YouTube channel, Locked On Blue Jays. As always, like Carter said, and I said once before, have a good weekend. Take it easy.